Ah, hello. I get many comments on my YouTube channel, which of course is what you're watching at the moment, inquiring about the colour saturation I achieve in my images. Not everybody likes them. They find it a little oversaturated. That is because I'm dealing with a commercial market that require strong colours, such as calendars, as we see here. Nevertheless, I'm going to take a, a similar picture to this, the one we have on the screen at the moment, and take you through stage by stage as to how I go from out of camera to the finished product. And just in case you're interested, the church is St Giles at Hosted Keynes in West Sussex. So let's get on with the demonstration. The original image out of camera looks underexposed. It is. And the histogram will probably send shockwaves amongst some of you. I judge images by my eyes and not graphs and numbers. This image still has a high dynamic range and I want to preserve as much detail in those clouds without burning them out to pure white. A correctly exposed image is in danger of doing just that, making it more difficult to correct in post-production. Of course, lightening shadows in post-production can add noise. Avoiding that depends on a number of factors. Age of camera and software, and perhaps most importantly, the expertise of the photographer. And that is something I cannot teach. Anyway, here is the metadata, which might help. I am using an up-to-date subscription release of Adobe Lightroom, and the camera is the Olympus OMD E-M1 Mark II with the 12 to 100 Pro lens. I am not using anything else, or doing too much jiggery pokery in camera, which would affect the exercise. I wish to make this demo meaningful to a wide audience, but not everyone will agree with my methods. It comes with a health warning, but my publishing market couldn't care less. The photograph is saved to RAW. This is important. If Lightroom is set up correctly, it is easy to backtrack if a mistake is made, as changes are normally saved to a separate sidecar file. In fact, when done, you can return to the image out of camera. I first change the color profile to landscape. It bumps up the colors without distorting them. Exposure increased. Because I underexpose in the first place, detail in the clouds is kept, which would not always be the case if the exposure was correct. Shadow detail improved with shadows and blacks sliders. Cloud detail restored by taking down highlights slider. I also consider whites, reducing them but on this occasion it didn't make much difference. Useful for images having a greater dynamic range. I now experiment with white balance presets. Auto makes the colors too warm. Daylight, that's about right. If necessary, I try custom by tweaking the temp and tint sliders. Increase clarity, but not too much, and vibrance too. Having made these adjustments, I now find it necessary to increase exposure a bit more and contrast, but again, don't overdo it. I scroll down to transform to straighten the image. 
Most of the changes in between are more of an advanced nature, such as noise reduction and distortion, and only used occasionally. Level didn't do much, but vertical nearly gets it right. I fine tune with rotate. This has left a chink of white border, bottom right. This is corrected with constrain crop. Every image will require its own answer. Scrolling back to basic, I decide to increase shadows a bit more. I am now ready to transfer to Photoshop, which is coupled to my copy of Lightroom. You can couple other photo editors, such as Corel Photo Paint. Although I use Adobe Lightroom and Photoshop, Corel Draw is underrated, and some of their procedures are better than Adobe. Image cropped from 4x3 to 16x9, the standard YouTube format, but this is now a JPEG copy. The changes to the RAW file are kept, which can be altered or deleted should I change my mind. I can also reduce the color saturation and save to a separate file for the benefit of those photographers who think my images are oversaturated. I conclude with an image having a huge dynamic range, showing before and after post-production. With the availability of up-to-date sensors and software, it is now inexcusable to have an overexposed window in a dark church. The Lightroom settings are severe and will probably make you weep. Post-production in Lightroom, Photoshop, or to use HDR, they can now sort these problems out in most cases.